Hi everybody. The purpose of this video is to go over section one of chapter three and we are going to talk about measures of center. How to determine the center of a given data set. Now in this chapter we're going to talk about three types of measures for the entire chapter. In this particular video we will talk about how to figure out where the center of the data set is. In our next video, we will talk about how to determine how wide the data set is. In other words, how much the data set varies, how much dispersion is in the data set. And then finally, in our last section, we will talk about how to determine the position of a data element or a collection of data elements in a data set. But for now, we are doing centers. And, the, and we have three measures of center the mean, the median, and the mode. The mean is basically the average. It's something you've all have done before. You take all the number, you, you take all the numbers in the data set, you add them up, and you divide by the numbers of data in that set. The median is basically the number in the middle. And finally, the mode is the number or numbers that repeat most often. Sometimes you can have a data set with absolutely no mode. None of the, none of the numbers repeat. Sometimes you can have a data set that has exactly one number that repeats. It is a unimodal set and that number is the mode. Sometimes you can have data sets where two numbers tie. If you do, then you have a bimodal data set and those two numbers are the two modes. And then finally, you can have a data set where three or more numbers repeat the most. And in that particular case, you have a multimodal data set. But we are going to start off with mean and notice that we have two types of means. One is, the, one is the population mean, which is the mean of the entire population under study. And if you can't study the entire population and you can only take a sample, then you have the sample mean, which is basically, as you might have guessed, the mean of the sample or whatever sample you took from that population. The sample mean is determined like this. If you have a n number of samples from your population, lowercase n, then your average is going to be the sum of all of those data sets divided by n. A shorthand version for this is 1 over n times the sum as i goes from 1 to n of x sub i, where x sub i is the ith data value. This symbol is called sigma, and it basically stands for summation. The mean for the population is computed the exact same way. However, notice here, we are going to use capital N for the size of the population. So capital N is the size of the population. Typically, it's bigger than lowercase n. And what you do is you take all of your data values in that population, add them up, divide it by N, and there you go. Now, we do have rounding rules relative to computing means, and here it is. You need to round to one more decimal place than the largest number of decimals in the data set. So I'll take a look at this data set right here. We have an integer, an integer, uh, two values that go to the 10th. So our mean must go to the 100th. So that is the basic rule that you wanna follow unless you are asked to round to a certain specific value, which to a certain specific number of decimal places, which will happen in Hawks. All right, so here's our first example. We have that students conducted a study of undergraduate sleep habits during the semester, and below is a sample of their survey, and we need to find the sample mean. Notice that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven data elements, and the sample mean is gonna equal the sum of those data elements divided by the number of data elements, which in this case will be seven. And that will give us 6.8571, and there's some more. But also notice that we need to round to the first decimal place. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the data value or, or the, um, the, the um, integer at the hundredth place. Notice that is five. And since this is five or higher, we are going to round up. Less than five, no rounding or round down. So in this case, we are going to round up and this will round to 6.9. Now on top of means, we actually also have weighted means. And you are all familiar with weighted means because that is how you compute your GPA. That is how your final grade is computed.
And here, each data value does not have to hold the same importance. For example, when you um, are computing your GPA, the number of credits that you get an A in, that has more importance than the number of credits that you actually get a B in. And this is shown by assigning a weight to, an a, to a data element. Now here, notice that X sub I is the I theta value and W is the weight of the I theta value. So what you're going to do is you are going to sum their products and then you're going to divide that by the sum of the weights and that will give you a weighted average. Perhaps the most uh, poignant example at this particular point might be, well, what is your final grade going to look like if you ace your homework, get all your homework done on time, and if you get um, an 80 on your test and an 80 on your final exam? Well, if that's the case, your data elements are 100, 80, and 80. This right here, this is data. These are your weights. Now, unfortunately, we cannot use, um, or we probably should not use percentages as weights. So we're going to use the equivalent decimal, and that will be 0 0.5, 0 0.3 and 0 0.2 does not want to do a decimal point um, and that of course once again these is homework tests final now in this particular case we got a hundred for a homework 84 a test and 84 a final so what we're going to do is our, our weighted average I'm going to call that XW is going to be xw bar is going to be our homework score times its weight plus my test score times that weight and then finally plus the score that i got for a final times its weight and that will be divided by the sum of all the weights. Conveniently, the sum will add up to one, and this will also add up to a 90. So someone that gets a, that, that does all their homework done and does a relatively good job in the final, they are gonna put, they are gonna come away with an A. What about someone that basically turned every single homework problem in late? Well, if that's the case, then your weights, once again, are still 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, and, but your scores are now 70. And here, we're going to ace all the tests, 100, 100. So what is their average grade going to look like? Well, it's going to be the product of the score and the weights, so 70 times 0 0.5 plus 100 times 0 0.3 plus 100 times 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.2, which will sum to one. And this will be equal to an 85. So if you ace all your tests, you will and, and, and are relate for all of your homework, you are not going to get an A in this class. So it's, it's important that you guys do your homework, do your homework, get it in on time, and you will ace this course. Okay, next thing that you guys might be concerned about is the computation of your GPA. So here's a student that received the following grades. For, uh, he, for six credit hours, he received an A. So for two of her courses, um, the student got an A. For one course, the student got a B. For one course, a student got a C, and the th last course, the student failed. Now, what's important to note is that the data is the value associated with the grade. So for an A, we have a 4, for a B, we have a 3, for a 2, we have a C, we have a 2, for a 1, we have a D, and for a 0, we have a 8. Those are the data values. The weights are the number of credit hours for each data value. So the weight associated with A is 6. The weight associated with B is 3. 
the weight associated with C is two, is three as well. We have no, we didn't receive any Ds, so there's zero here. The weight associated with an F is also three. So your GPA, which is your sample mean, it's going to be equal to the product of the weight in the data. So 6 times 4 plus 3 times 3 plus 3 times 2 plus 3 times 0, which of course is 0, divided by the sum of all the weights, which will be 6 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, or 15. And this will give us a GPA of 2.6. And that brings us to the median. As I mentioned before, the median is the number in the middle. So this is what we want to do. Here is our data set, our data set from example one. The first thing you want to do is sort it. There it is, sorted. Then we want to find the number in the middle. Now, since we have an odd data set, the number in the middle is going to be right here. How do I know it's in the middle? Well, we have three above it three below it. So this is the median. The median happens to be six. It is the number in the middle. Well, what if you had an even data set? And we could show that by just getting rid of the four. Here's my even data set. It has six um, elements. Notice that there, and here it is sorted. Notice there is no number in the middle. If I, this is not the middle because then I have two above it and three below it. This is not the middle because then I have two below it, three above it. So we need to look at the two numbers in the middle. And these are the two numbers in the middle. This is what happens. You have an even data set. And we know that there are two numbers in the middle because there's two above it, two below it. And then the median is going to be the average of these two numbers. In this case, the average is the number in the middle. We can compute that by doing 6 plus 7 divided by 2. That's the average of two numbers. Um, and if we did we would get 13 over 2 or 6.5. Or you can just look at that and just know that the number between 6 and 7 is 6.5. Anyways, this is the median for this particular data set. And that, bring, and that brings us to this little procedure. How do you want to do this? You want to sort the data set. How can you sort it? You can sort it by hand, or you can sort it using your calculator. Now, if the cardinality of the data set is odd, and what is cardinality? That's basically a mathy word to say the size of the data set. So if the size is odd, the median is the number in the middle. If the side is even, then the median is the average of the two numbers in the middle. And that brings us to this example. So here we want to find the median for both data sets. And notice that for the first one, here it is sorted, okay? And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, six is the number in the middle. And you guessed it, that is the median. So the median for this particular case is going to be six. There we go, six. My computer's being a little slow today. And now for the next one, here it is sorted. Notice now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers. It's even. So I need to look at the two numbers in the middle. That would be these two numbers right here, seven and eight. And the median for this case is going to be the average of seven and eight. So a lot of you can look at that and go, okay, cool. Average is 7.5. If you're not sure, you can just basically just compute the average for those two numbers. That will be seven plus eight divided by two, 15 over two. 7.5. Okay, next we have um, the mode. Remember, the mode is the value or collection of values, in case you have a tie, that repeats the most often. And the key here, they have um, that someone has to win. If you have a if, if you have a, if you have a three or five or a five way tie, you know, um, and for through all the numbers, you don't have a mode. Um, so let's go look at a couple of examples. Here's our first one. Notice for this one, seven repeats the most often. This is a unimodal data set, and the mode happens to be seven. 
once again, let's go ahead and order it. There it is. Notice that two repeats, we have two twos and we have two sevens. These two tie for repeating the most. So this is a bimodal data set and the modes are not two and six, the modes are two and seven. That obviously is a typo. Now here's our next example. Notice, and um, here's our data set, and it's probably safe to order it. Here it is ordered. Notice that nothing repeats. This is this this data set has no mode, as I say right here. And finally, let's take a look at this data set. Now, each of these data values, notice they each repeat twice, right? So nobody, so nobody wins. Um, there is no, um, there, there is no subset. There's, there's no number in the data set that actually wins. And since there's no number here that repeats the most, this data set has no mode, no mode whatsoever. Okay. So if you have a tie like this, no mode. Now, if it turned out that I've had an additional five, well, then I would have a mode of five. It would be a unimodal system with a mode of five. If I added an additional two, then it would be a bimodal system with a mode of two and five. If I added an additional three, it would be a multimodal data set with the modes two, three, and five. If I added a number four, I'm back to having no mode. Because once again, nobody wins. Okay, so this is our last example before I go into Hawks and show you a few computer things. And here we have this data set of people um, of, of retirement ages. And actually one that could argue that I was retired at 42 because at the time I didn't have a job, I was basically raising my kids. Um, and what I want to do is I want to calc I, I want to calculate the um, mean median mode, but I want to do this one first. So I want to look at the data set where 42 is where 42 is excluded. And if I wrote that data set sorted, I would have 77, 78, 79, 80, 80, 82, and 84. What is the mean? Well, in this particular case, the mean is going to be 80. And you can do that by adding all those up and dividing by seven. What is the median? Well, the median is the number in the middle. This right here is the number in the middle. So the median would be equal to 80. What is the mode? Well, the mode is going to be the number that repeats most often. That of course is 80. So the mode is 80 which kind of makes sense because there's a fair amount of symmetry here. Now, suppose that we add the 42. So we're going to go back to part A. Well, then the median is going to be equal to 75.3. Notice how the addition of this outlying element dramatically shifted the mean, dramatically shifted the average or the mean. Okay. What about the median? Well, the median is going to be the number in the middle, but now we have an L, we have, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements or eight data items. And these are the two data elements in the middle. So the median is going to be equal to 79.5. Okay. So the addition of this outlier made a change in the median, but not so much. And then finally, the mode is 80. Why? Because 80 still repeats the most. Okay, so notice that when we add, and, and this is what we would call an outlier. It is really removed from the data set. And notice that the mean right here, the mean is directly affected by outliers. By adding that one value, the mean shifted by 4.7 4.7 years. The median, not so much. It did shift, but it only shifted by a half of a year. So it's not very sensitive to outliers. The mode, which by the way, should have been 80, not eight. Hang on a second, 80. 
not eight. Um, didn't change at all. The mode is very insensitive to outliers. So in a situation like this, the mode or perhaps the median is probably a better measure of the center. And that brings us to my very last point here, which is this. If you have qualitative, quantitative data, remember quantitative data is basically just a bunch of labels. All right. Well, if, you have, if it's a bunch of labels, they can't be sorted. So sorting has no meaning. Uh, you can't you, um, you you can't find so you can't find a median. You can't compute an average because math has no meaning. The only thing you can do is find the mode, the label that repeats most often. Okay, for quantitative data that has absolutely no outliers, so like example uh, a part uh, example two. This one down here, or no, I'm sorry, this one, this yeah this one down here. You want to use the you're, you want to use the mean. Um, remember here, the mode is 80. I forgot to write that down. Um, if you have quantitative data with outliers, median is probably your best bet because it accounts for the outliers, but not nearly as dramatically as the mean. Um, and that is all I have as far as slides are concerned. There are a few things that I want to do that will make life easier, easier for you for Hawks. And let me get that going real quick. Okay, so here I am in Hawks, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through your homework, but I'm going to do it in practice mode. So here I'm going to go ahead and start. I have five problems. Almost all of these problems have three steps. So here's my first problem. Here I want to find the mean of a given data set. Now, as you've mentioned before, the mean is basically the, the mean is going to be the sum of all of these numbers divided by one, two, three, four, five six okay so let's go ahead and do that that is going to be so 15 plus 14 plus 3 plus 1 minus 5 minus 10. okay i add them all up now i want to divide them by 1 2 3 4 5 6 divided by 6 I get three. And that is what my answer should be here. Okay, next. I want, they want the median. Now the easiest thing, the easiest thing to do might be to sort the data. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go into stat. I am going to go into um, edit. I'm going to put all this stuff in L1. So I'm going to clear what I have because I really don't want that. Clear, enter, there you go. And I'm gonna put the data in. 15, enter, 14, three, one, minus five, don't use that, but use the minus symbol, and then minus 10. Okay, now I can go and I can sort it. And that will be stat, sort ascending, enter, and, uh, and and to get list one, I want to go to list, which the list is right there above stat. So it's second, stat, L1, close the parenthesis, and now it is sorted. I can go back into stat, edit, and notice that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, one and three are the two numbers in the middle. What if I can make that a little bigger? Are the, are the two numbers in the middle. As a consequence, the median is going to be one plus three divided by two. The number between one and three, that happens to be two. Okay, and then finally, what is the mode? Well, notice that none of the numbers repeat. And that's the case, we have no mode. Okay, and I can go ahead and submit my answer. Okay, now there's something else I wanted to show you. Now, so we have all this data in L1s, the data set, and we know what our answers are. Here they are. There's the median of three, mean of three, median of two. What you can also do to compute that is go over and click stat. Go over to calc. Look at one variable statistics. That's what we want to do. We want to do one variable statistics. 
We want the data to be in L1. L1. We want frequency list to be blank because we're not going to use that right now. And we're going to go to calculate. So L1, nothing, calculate. And there we are. This right here is your mean. This tells you that the mean is three. If you go down right there, you will find the median. It gives you that the median is two. Your calculator will compute for you the mean and compute for you the median just like this. It will not compute for you the mode. That you have to do by yourself. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Okay, so here we want to do basically the exact same thing. And what we're going to do in this particular case is I'm going to do it strictly by calculator. So I'm going to go to stat, edit. I want to clear what I already have in L1. I can do that by highlighting L1, hitting clear, hitting enter. And then we just go ahead and put the numbers in. 9, enter, negative 2. This is negative 2, enter, 9, enter, 9, enter, negative 2, enter, negative 2, enter, and then finally 14. Oh, didn't want to do that. Let's go, go back, hit delete. That will get rid of that. Hit enter. Okay, let's just check to make sure they're right. We have 14, negative 2, negative 2, 9, 9, negative 2, and 9. Okay, so now we're going to go to stat. Don't need to sort. Just going to go over to calc. We are going to do one variable statistics. The data is in L1. I'm going to hit enter. We don't need to, we don't need, frequency list must remain blank. Calculate. And there we are. We have that the mean is five. So we should put in 5.0 because of our rounding rule. Okay, awesome. What about our median? Well, the median is the number in the middle. Uh, you could sort that to figure it out, but since we did it this way, we can just go down. There it is. Median happens to be nine. Nine happens to be the number in the middle. Then finally for the mode. For the mode, you really can't use your calculator, but you could, we, we, could, we can look at the data here. Notice that the nine repeats three times, the negative two repeats three times. There we go. So this is a bi, it has two modes. This is a bimodal system. And the two modes will be negative two. And then nine. Okay. Now I'm gonna skip through a couple of the problems. There's one that I want to focus on before I quit, before we stop. It's not this one, it is this one. So here, we are given the following weights and data values, and, we, and they're asking us to round our decimal answer to three decimal places. So how do we do this? Well, one, we can actually use the weighted mean formula that I, I gave you. It's gonna be the product of each column, all add together, divided by the sum of all the weights, and these are the weights. Or you can use your calculator. Um, go into um, stat, go into edit, and in L1, it might be best to put in your data, which is the second row. So we're, we're gonna put the second row in the first column, which sounds kind of weird, but trust me. Okay, so that is going to be not nine, five, eight, five, nine, nine, five, eight. Okay, now we need to do the weights. Well, first I need to hit enter, don't I? There we go, okay. Now we need to do the weights. That is gonna be 4.15, 1 1.86, 5.98, 1 1.48, 4.5, 5.52, 6.33, 3.88. Okay, so we are in. Let's just make sure our data is right. 
8, 6.33, 5.52, 4.5, 1.48, 5.98, 1.86, 4.15, 9585995958. So that looks good. So now I want to go to stat. Once again, I want to go to first variable statistics and hit enter. I put my data, the second column, in L1. That's where it needs to go. Now the frequency list, freak list, that actually is where we want to put our weights. So in here, we're going to put in L2. I can do that by second list, right above stat, select L2, hit enter. Okay, so list is in L1, weights are, or data is in L1, weights are here. I can now go and calculate. And I get a first for I, I get a weighted mean of 7.559 and and the fourth decimal place is six. Now remember we need to round the three decimal places. So here's my one, two, three. I need to look at my fourth. My fourth is is is, is greater than five or is five or greater. So I need to round up. Five nine is going to round to six zero. So this should be 7.560 and there you go and i believe that is all that i have for you everything else this last question is the um, gpa problem that we actually did earlier that shouldn't be a problem well that's actually let's go ahead and do this now remember we mentioned that these are the data values four three two and one and then these are the weights Okay, so here's what we can do. Go into stat, edit, and let's clear L2 and L1. Clear, enter, there we go. Uh, L1, highlight L1, clear, enter. Now remember the um, the value associated with the grade is the data. So the data is four, three, two, one. And this is the weight of the four. Notice we've gotten 13 fours. So this, uh, let me get over to L2, there we go. So that's gonna be 13. Uh, didn't get any Bs, that's not good. So that will be zero. Did not get any Cs, that will be zero did not get and we got nine hours of d's and there was one data value that i forgot which one was that that is f so let's go over to l1 put in zero for f and then we can come back over here to l2 and we can put in six for f Okay, so let's make sure we, uh, we have this right. We have 13 A's, 9 D's, 6 F's, and 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So I can come to stat, calc, enter for first verbal statistics. Data is in L1, weights are in L2. We can calculate. Oh, I get to, have to get down there to calculate. There we go. And we have a GPA of 2.178. We want to go to two decimal places. And so since my third decimal place is higher than five, this will round to 2.18. There you go. And that is all that I have for this particular video. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. This is Bob Boyle, signing off.